Hello, everybody. Um, just wanted to stop in and say um, hello and introduce myself. My name is Adrian Hall, and I am the faculty-led and events coordinator for the Education Abroad Office. Um, and I am just here to kind of moderate things and answer any questions you might have in the chat. Um, I want to introduce Tatiana Summers, who will be leading this. Um, she is going to be taking a trip to Greece. Um, I just want to let everybody know that this is going to be recorded. Um, so if you don't want your video sh shown, um, just make sure you turn that off. Um, and now I'm going to turn it over to her. And if you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. Thanks. All right. Hi, let me share my screen. Okay. Hello everyone, I'm uh, Dr. Tatiana Summers and uh, I lead the uh, UN Greece program, The Cradle of Civilization. Um, I did classics at the University of Alabama. I'm an associate professor and uh, I was born and raised in Greece. Uh, I have been directing this program for um, several years now, <laughs> since 2000. So I'm um, very comfor comfortable doing it and I have a lot of experience. So here's one fun fact about me. Uh, one of my students wrote uh, on the program evaluation on year that Dr. Summers is the next best thing that came out of Greece after democracy. I took it as a compliment. Um, all right, so our program uh, runs for three weeks. Uh, it will start on June 4th and will run until the 24th. You will get get uh, up to six credit hours and our classroom is the whole of Greece. We um, do not stay in one place. We travel to a new location every two to three days and uh, stay at eight different towns throughout Greece. So we really get a feel of uh, the country. We visit, we visit the most famous historical locations. Um, some examples are the Acropolis and the Parthenon of course where the uh, where democracy was born, the idea, the concept, and the organization, essentially, of democracy. Thermopylae, well, Leonidas and his 300 Spartans fought the Persians, and we go to the very battlefield where things, where things took place. Mycenae is uh, the city with the palace of Agamemnon, who was associated with the Trojan War. Olympia, the place where the Olympic Games were founded. So. Uh, big names, big names, oh, Delphi, the Oracle of Delphi, of course, uh, which you see at the picture. Um, fascinating places that you read in books, uh, you look at pictures, but we are going to be looking at all these things um, live and uh, discussing them. I mentioned that we travel quite a bit, so we have a coach bus. It's air conditioned, it's very comfortable, and uh, it's fun right because it sits up high and um, we have great great views. Um, here's one of our classrooms, the White Tower of the Saloniki. Um, we sit outside and lecture and then visit the tower, a medieval monument. This is um, one of the past years, a picture from one of the past years groups. So in this course which is taught in English, you don't need to know Greek or ancient Greek or modern Greek, um, we study the myth that some of, uh, some of you are myth buffs, the history, the culture of uh, antiquity. Uh, we also discuss the ancient technological inventions. Here I have a picture of the Antikythera mechanism, which is the oldest computer of the world dating back to 200 BC. Um, and the intellectual advancements that shaped the modern world, like the first university was uh, established in Greece. So uh, our democracy was born there. Here I have a picture of a marble randomizer, which um, uh, they used to choose the um, uh, acting officials for the day, uh, the judges or the uh, juries, uh, that kind of thing, and uh, to prevent uh, people from getting bribes, essentially. So a lot of fascinating things we see in Greece. Um, in the morning, we visit um, an archeological park. I lecture there, you see a picture of my students there, right at the 
um, classroom, another one, uh, the tombs of, at Vergina uh, is a classroom. Uh, I, I lecture there. Uh, I talk about the myths and the history associated with the site. Then we visit the museum that is associated with that particular site. And the students study a theme of their choice throughout the program. So I give them a list, I give them information that they need, and they decide, some of them decide to study daily life, others uh, study athletics, war, art, religion. Um, and um, then they uh, go to the museum and take pictures of artifacts that relate to their topic. Uh, they also take information down from their little cards. And then when uh, they go back home <laughs> at the hotel, um, they dedicate uh, you know, a few minutes to writing down the descriptions of these artifacts and then um, deciding what pictures will go there uh, along with the descriptions. In the end, um, we, uh, I give you, I give my students three or four days to finish their final project, which is an essay that they write based on the observations they have made on the evolution of the concepts and artifacts uh, that they have collected over the centuries. So um, it's a really useful ex exercise and they draw really wonderful conclusions uh, from that exercise. So this is the class. Where do we stay? We stay at three and four star hotels. I have handpicked them because uh, I've been doing it for a long time and I like comfort. But as you will see, uh, our pri the price of the program is very competitive. Because I've been doing it for so many years, the people know me, the hotel owners know me, uh, they like my students and they they have kept their prices down, so it's, it's a tremendous advantage. Uh, I choose our hotels by location, the general appeal, and the price. For example, here in Athens, you see that we stay at the Coral Hotel, which is on the water, and in the afternoons, the students are free, to, uh, have free time, they can spend it any way they want. Um, at Nathalie, the hotel is uh, also on the water. You see a beautiful promenade in front of the hotel, a medieval castle. Uh, people rent boats and go over to the medieval castle. There's another medieval castle right behind us, so there's a lot of ambience, a lot of things for the students to explore in the free time. Uh, Olympia, uh, in Olympia, we stay at Olympians Asti Hotel, another very, very beautiful hotel at a great price for us. Uh, Delphi, our hotel has incredible views uh, of the mountains, of the valleys, of the sea over there, of another town. Um, the air is beautiful, it smells so beautiful from the olive trees and uh, the, the herbal uh, plants that are all around. Calabaca is a new addition to the program. Every year I try to do something new. So uh, we haven't stayed at this uh, uh, guest house, which, which is called Monastery Guest House, but it is an inn. It has a pool, um, and it is a, this incredible area with uh, these rocky, rocky mountains and uh, uh, Byzantine uh, monasteries on top. So the program studies both antiquity but goes all the way over to um, the modern age, and we see the connections and the continuity of the civilization. Hence, we have an area where it is in the middle of the way uh, and we study the uh, uh, culture and the evolution of culture at that point. All right, many, some of you um, are probably seasoned travelers, but uh, uh, for those who don't know, you definitely need a passport and your passport must be valid for six months after the departure date. So after June 4, you, you, your passport still needs to be uh, valid for six months because of security purposes. That's a rule, uh, that's a, uh, a US rule, <clears throat> federal rule. Um, you don't need a visa to visit Greece. And the currency in Greece is the euro, which uh, today uh, is uh, 1.18. The equivalency is $1.18, which is a pretty good price. Um, uh, you can use your debit and credit cards in Greece. There are ATMs everywhere. So 
you don't um, really need to worry about getting a lot of uh, euros before you leave home. Now, um, COVID-19. Um, Greece had a really good handle in the management of um, the spread of the disease. So the total cases to date are about 13,000, a little bit over 13,000, and the total deaths up to this point are 313. Um, so we anticipate that um, things will have returned back to normal by the time we leave for Greece. The program costs uh, $3,500, uh, which covers the lodging, um, all breakfasts and a few meals, the transportation um, on the coach bus, that is, uh, the museum tickets, student insurance and uh, school fees, tuitions, that kind of thing. It does not cover the airfare and food. So uh, it lets you uh, decide how much you want to spend uh, in these areas. So what next? Uh, you need to go to uh, the webpage of studyabroad.ua.edu um, if you're interested in uh, going to, to Greece with me or use the QR code that you see at the bottom of these pages uh, to fill out the general faculty application. Um, this is the a general application, but then your application for Greece will be moved to the particular program. Um, <clears throat> so sign up for program updates uh, or email uh, me at uh, tsummers at ua.edu. I hope to see you at the next update um, or in Greece with me. I would I'm available to answer any questions you may have. Um, do you have any plans on turning this into an online option if for some reason travel is still suspended? Uh, that was a question, a question that came up last uh, summer. Um, and I decided against it because anyone can do the virtual Thing, looking at pictures on their screen, it's so much different to go there to the actual country. So um, I decided against it last time. Um, I haven't heard any good arguments that uh, could change my mind, but uh, if any of the students really, really want it and present, make the case for this being a virtual tour, a virtual program, I might consider it, but you know, uh, nobody really asked for it, so I wasn't forced to consider it seriously. Yeah, all right, it looks like Mason's got a question for us. Um, what are the best things students can do to prepare to go to Greece? Um, oh, uh, <laughs> You can do a lot of things if you're interested in it, but uh, um, I would say start with uh, reading Edith Hall's uh, Greek mythology book. It's very entertaining. Uh, you can find it in a small or larger editions, abbreviated uh, or expanded, uh, and it will give you a good handle on the myths. Of course, I will retell the stories there, but knowing them um, from the get-go and knowing all the associations they they have with other um, stories uh, makes it a lot more fun for the students to understand deeper what we're talking about. Uh, I use the stories as a starting point and then I start uh, talking about the historical events but the stories shape a lot of the actual history and of the way people um, acted in its particular location, because its location is associated with stories. Uh, I have a student who is doing a research in, in mythology this semester in Greek mythology, and uh, I, I was telling her that, uh, you know, you're reading Hercules, um, but you don't realize that there is a town called Hydra, and uh, like Lerna Hydra, or a town that is it's called um, um, a lake that's called the Symphalian Lake where he killed the, the birds and things like that. All his 
store is have a location. They, they, they're associated with a location. It's an amazing thing. And that's what we are doing there, uh, connecting uh, myth and history and legends. Um, I also have a pre-departure project. I didn't mention that. I have a pre-departure project where uh, um, the students put together a small presentation in PowerPoint format and uh, I give them categories that they need to look up information about uh, the different periods, time periods in Greece from antiquity all the way to the modern age and uh, to, give a, a, to get an idea of uh, what this country is about. It's a, a small presentation, about um, 15 slides. Uh, they don't give it to anybody. They just put it together and submit it to me with pictures and some narrative. And, but that uh, uh, gives them a good background about the um, events that uh, I talk about in my lectures. All right, here's another question. Are there any quizzes or tests uh, while they're abroad? And um, can you repeat the name of that book one more time so I can throw it in the chat for everybody? Okay, the book is Edith Hall, E-D-I-T-H, Edith Hall, Greek Mythology. And uh, quizzes, yes, there are quizzes. Um, but uh, the way I do the quizzes is to, the purpose of my quizzes is to get students to pay attention to my lectures. You know, I like to have an audience that is alive. <laughs> so uh, I give a lecture, students take notes, and then I give a quiz on that lecture. But each student can use their own notes to answer the questions. So in this way, they both pay attention, they take good notes, and they go use their notes to get a good grade. Uh, so pretty much all of my quizzes are, uh, after the first one, <laughs> there are hundreds. The first one, they're a little bit shaky about it. They don't know how, how detailed uh, notes they should take, but uh, after that, they do fine. Uh, there are no tests. The, there's that final project of the essay, and there is the, um, the journal which I want you to put together. As I mentioned, you take pictures of artifacts. You write the description that you find at the museum about these uh, artifacts. And then at the end, the last three or four days, uh, I take you to a place where they can develop your pictures. If you have a, uh, um, uh, any type of cam camera, they, they are well equipped they develop your pictures and then you glue them at the space you allow in your journal. And so you have a journal that not only helps you write your essay, but you have something beautiful to show to your parents when you come back. This is what I did in Greece. This is what I learned. So my students are very appreciative about doing this pro these two projects, the essay and the journal. Other than that, uh, it's the, the pre-departure project that you submit to me before you leave. Awesome. We have another question from Mackenzie. Um, she asks, what classes at UA can the credits be applied to? Okay, this is a 300 level uh, course um, without prerequisites. Uh, so it works for, um, of course, classics majors, but uh, for all the other students, it's an elective. Uh, high level electives. Um. Great questions. Keep them coming if you have any more and feel free to pop on also if you want to ask them. I want to mention they have a great variety of students uh, every time from engineering to business um, to uh, of course arts and sciences a lot of them but um, a lot of variety. They they like the six hour credits uh, as an elective. It's not a very difficult course, but it is packed with information. And because you go to the actual places, students learn a lot. I want to say that my students always come back changed. Their uh, their worldview changes. A lot of things change in their lives. Their dreams change. Their careers change. I've had students 
who changed from engineering and became classics majors. They loved it so much. And now uh, one of them is doing classics, uh, a PhD in classic, classical archaeology at the University of Florida. And she started from engineering, uh, mechanical engineering, yes. So amazing transfer, transformations happened during that program. All right, we've got another one. How much free time do students have? That way they can travel and explore on their own. Uh, they have the afternoons free, usually. Um, uh, and no student has really felt the need to travel any, any more than we travel because we travel every two or three days to a new location. So you need, it, Greece is very different from the States. Um, in the States, wherever you go, you have the sense that um, you have your anchor places, you have your mall, you have your Walmart, you have your gas stations, you have, and you ha then you have some, uh, you know, additional character building uh, um, items. Okay. But in Greece, every place you go, you, you travel for an hour, you have new architecture, new, new geological phenomena. Uh, uh, the people are, are different. The structure of life is different. It's so amazing. Going from the islands to the mainland, from Athens to Olympia, tremendous difference. So you get so much out of our program traveling that they really don't feel the need for it. Of course, they are free to um, travel in the afternoons. Um, usually they cannot do it overnight because we have class every day. Uh, even on weekends, it is kind of a packed schedule. You need to get your uh, contact hours within these three weeks. So uh, we have something to do every day, except for the last four days, which we are at the retreat town um, with the hotel on the water and you can be on the beach doing your, <laughs> your uh, synthesis, your, your work. Um, so, but they do have free time in the afternoons to explore the town and meet the people and uh, strike new friendships. Great question, Emma. And also students do have the opportunity to travel before or after the program. So if that yes. is something you want to do, you just make sure the education abroad and Dr. Summers knows, and then you can uh, travel before or after the program. Mason's got a question. It says, what would you say the academic focus of the class is? Uh, it's a world civilization type of thing. Um, so you learn the, um, you understand the beginnings of modern civilization because the Greek civilization, uh, the Greek or Roman civilization uh, have had a, a huge impact in shaping our modern civilization. Things like the theater were invented in Greece. We talk about that. We are at the very place where the theater was invented. Today you watch movies and Hollywood's a big deal, but unless theater had it was invented, we invented, you wouldn't have these things. So you see how tremendous these concepts are for the first time to be conceived and developed. And so that's the focus, the academic focus, um, uh, understanding your culture and civilization, understanding where everything comes from today. So we connect everything to today. It's not just the past, it's today. It's for us, it's relevant to us. As I showed you on picture, we see the first computer model there. I mean, it doesn't get any more <laughs> relevant <laughs> to our life today. The, the fact that they had automated machines, that's what it means, a computer is an automated machine, not run by electricity, of course, but um, a mechanical, but it's still a computer because it, it, it made calculations for things. Great questions. If you have any more, feel free to throw them in the chat. We've got a few more minutes um, before we'll need to stop the session. What are some of your majors? Uh, if you care to uh, reveal it, we, uh, sometimes I show you how things are connected. Uh, I try to relate um my lectures to to people's interests or students interests and um, um 
make good looks like we have a uh, public relations uh chemical engineering but i want to go back to this so badly yeah <laughs> <laughs> a creative media yeah uh, these are pretty hard. <laughs> public criminology, that's a good one. Criminology, uh, but public relations, the, the rhetoric, rhetoric was uh, developed in, in Greece, was a big deal. Um, uh, chemistry was at the beginning, at its beginning in antiquity, but uh, engineering, oh my goodness, we go to a so-called museum, it's a, it's a um, uh, the gallery essential of uh, ancient Greek machines and you would be amazed how much they had automated their world and what they were doing with that so it's, it's really fascinating uh, creative media this is a tough one <laughs> but you know again um, uh, with a, everything begins with theater and uh, uh, creative media revolves around the imagery of that criminology yes the legal system uh, the u.s legal system is based on the roman legal system which was based on the greek legal system <laughs> so essentially uh, and we we uh, talk somewhat about some of the laws that they had um, put forth microbiology uh, well microbiology needs a um, uh, how's it called? Microscope, and they didn't have that, but they had observation powers. Aristotle was uh, able to figure out how, um, uh, for example, the octopus uh, um, um, it reduces, which uh, it was only. Um, it is very hard by observation to even if you dissect it to figure it out and only when they discovered the microscope where they were able to say oh my goodness you know 2000 years before uh, uh, aristotle said it and he was right the study abroad is runs um between uh, june 4th and the 24th so it's summer uh, one um music education well music started i don't want to say started there but they developed the musical notation system not the western notation but um some system and uh at delphi at the delphi oracle we see uh marble inscriptions with uh, a song to their god and uh, musical notations <laughs> in between the lines so um, uh, a lot of musical inst instruments come from uh, there. The guitar was born in Greece. Um, the, 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 the drums, yes. So how can we join the email list? That's Adrian's. Um, yeah, so um, if you signed up for Zoom through your UA account, I already have your email address, but if not, um, anyone who is interested and you want to make sure that your email address is added to the list, feel free to drop it in the chat and um, I will make sure Dr. Summers gets it to add you to the email list. Yeah, I'm uh, sending you uh, you uh, in the chat you have my email uh, tsummers at ua.edu. Uh, send me an email to put you on my personal list uh, of students interested in going to Greece and I will be sending you updates. Yes. Uh, thank you. Yeah, you can put your emails here and I will uh, um, copy them. Excellent. Very good idea. Uh, yeah, how many spots? Uh, the program is for 25 students maximum um so it's first come first uh, serve <laughs> um, program and um we i usually have uh between 22 and 25 students sometimes i have a waiting list so um it is important that you apply as soon as you have a sense that it is very likely that you're going to greece all right everybody we have um about so if you do want to be added to that email list to make sure you add it um, if not this will be recorded and you can go back and watch it if you do have any questions 
and email Dr. Summers. All right, you guys, y'all have a great Thank day. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you, Adrian, for organizing it. <laughs>